When we, in a few moments, go into an in-depth Bible study, that will be our text. For right now, if you will, turn to Galatians chapter 3 and the text that Danny read just a few moments ago. I want you to look at that uh, together with me. Galatians chapter 3. And I want you to notice, let's go back through what he was reading and see if we can make sure that we understand the point. Because when we get the point, it is an extremely positive message. Because what we don't want is the opposite of what this says. The opposite of what this says would be bad news for us. So let's look at it. Notice he says, verse 11, no one is justified by the law in the sight of God. He says, now this is evident because why? Because God said, the just shall live by faith. So what God's statement is this, he is saying that nobody can be justified by the law and his proof for that is his own statement that the just shall live by faith. So he continues, he says, yet the law is not of faith. Well, now, if you're sitting there thinking through this whole thing, you might be wondering, wait a minute, then why did we have it? Why, why in the world did God have something that didn't come out of faith? But the man who does them shall live by them. That almost sounds contradictory. Here's what it sounds like. You can't be justified by the law because you're justified by faith. And the law didn't come by faith, but you have to live by it. Sounds contradictory, doesn't it? Sounds like he's saying you don't, and then he turns around and says, but you do. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, first of all, to be redeemed means to be bought back. When I study this in Bible studies with people, I always get to the point of using the concept of a pawn shop. If you take something in there, you need money real fast and you have something of value and they say, okay, I'll give you this much money for it. And then in a certain period of time, you can go back and redeem it. You can buy it back, can't you? Now, do you pay the second time what he paid for it the first time? No. That's not redemption. He has to make some money. Things are different now. When you're redeemed, there's a problem. There's a, a, an additional thing that has happened. What happened with Jesus? When sin came into the world and we sell ourselves to the devil, the redemption price is even far greater than that. The redemption price was Jesus going through the cup and separating himself voluntarily from his father. And people try to figure out, well, wait a minute, how, how was Jesus separated? How is it that he felt something different? No illustration no example is ever 100% perfect. But for us, just to sort of get a glimpse into what it might be like, if I could grab you by the arm and jerk your arm right off your shoulder and show it to you, how's that feel? Jesus was ripped from his father. 
Now that is a far greater price paid for the redemption. And it was necessary. And what was he redeeming us from? The curse of the law. Well, wait a minute. If God made the law, the Old Testament law, then how is it a curse? Well, it's the curse that comes from the law. He didn't say the law is a curse. He says the curse that comes from the law. In other words, the curse that the law reveals. So you might ask yourself, well, okay, what is that? I think plain and simple, here's what it is. The curse of the law is nobody can keep it. That's the curse. The law was not a curse. The law revealed the curse, meaning nobody has the ability to keep that law perfectly. If you want to be justified by a law system, you will fail. You will lose. Nobody wins in a law system. Nobody. Because in a law system, in order to win, you have to do everything right all of the time. As James would say, if you break one law, in your lifetime of 85 years, you would be a failure. Because by a law system, you have to get everything right every single time. But Jesus redeemed us from that curse. He bought us back from that curse. Now, he says, sure, there is law with God. But through Jesus Christ, it is not a curse anymore that rests upon us. Because now everybody can receive the promise that Abraham had. In you, all nations of the earth will be blessed. There is a blessing available to anyone and it has nothing to do with a curse. It has everything to do with the renouncing of the curse. Now, that doesn't leave me free to do just whatever I want to do. It doesn't leave me free to say, oh, well, since I don't have to follow law anymore, then I can be lawless. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Because Jesus said, if you love me, what will you do? Keep my commandments. Well, that's a command. That's a law. But let me ask you something. Do you have to do it? Sure. Do you ever do it perfectly? No. So Jesus' blood is what takes away the guilt that comes when we mess up. It doesn't dispense with law. It dispenses with the mentality of law, the system of law and replaces it with a system of grace. But every system works on principle and law. And so in the system of grace, there are laws, there are commands, there are principles. But thankfully, the curse that says, do it perfectly or you lose, has been done away. And now through Jesus... Our imperfection is replaced with his perfection. And in Jesus, I find my perfection. Therefore, tonight, here's what I know. You are here because you are trying to find the perfection that is in Christ Jesus. You want to live according to that. You want to honor the one who made you perfect by striving continually to learn and to do more and better. I know that about you or you wouldn't be here. There are far more things that the world might offer than here. So I know 
as we talk tonight about the heart, I know where your heart is. Number one, be thankful that you don't live by the system of law. Number two, be penitent of the sin that caused Jesus to die. Number three, rejoice in the forgiveness that he offers. And then number four, be committed to a life that honors him for the great gift that he has given. If you're not a child of God tonight, he wants you to be perfect in him. And he takes that opportunity, he, we take that opportunity to say to anyone who's ready to obey their Lord and Master and put him on in baptism or to have prayer or help from those who are fellow brethren to say, pray for me and help me. Tonight, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be grateful. And if we can help you live in that proper environment, we want to help you. We want to offer you that opportunity. Let's all stand and sing.